calling to get any input that you might be able to share based on what we do know, which is still pretty limited at this point. Okay. Um, but uh, just to update you, the police have sent out a press release saying that safety protocol had been followed. Um, so that's as much detail as they really gave, but um, it seems as if the bouncy house must have been tied down. Um, and they also did say that all the equipment was in serviceable working condition. So I don't know if that would impact the way that you would look at this case, but I thought I'd catch you up on that. Uh, no, it wouldn't impact the way I would look at it. And, and frequently the, the police, their investigation is either wrong or it hasn't gone deep enough to explore other issues and reasons as to why the event happened. So for instance, I'd want to know whose safety protocol are we talking about? If it's the company's safety, safety protocol that rented out the, um, the bouncy house, did they create the protocol? And was it the right protocol? Mm. Um, these bouncy houses, there's a history of them blowing away and injuring children. It's happened mm. in several states over the last 10 to 20 years that I'm aware of. And um, that brings up the question of what were the weather conditions on the day? Uh, what were the forecasts? Were, was it expected to be a windy day? If that's the case, uh, do the safety protocol, does it address for that type of weather condition? Mm -hmm. um, the fact that it blew away tells me that it either wasn't anchored properly, wasn't anchored at all, or it wasn't anchored sufficiently given the weather. So just because, the, just because the police say that the safety protocol was followed does not mean that there's no legal case or legal claim here. Mm. So as far as we know, we've spoken to the um, National Weather Service. They don't actually have a wind meter there, but a local wind meter um, that seems like it's provided by the Department of Transportation shows that the peak dust at about that time was 60 miles per hour. Okay. Um, and that's as much as we know, but even later in the day, I think the highest drought was 18. Um, so it doesn't sound like well, weather. Well, what did the event organizers know? what was available to them and obviously it's clear that 16 or 18 miles per hour wind is more than sufficient to take that thing off the ground right mm -hmm. so um, I'm telling you know the other reporters that I've talked to that the company that owned this product and leased it out to the public should should know or should be aware of the risk that these uh, bouncy houses can blow away in the wind. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not it's not any secret. So if you are aware of this type of risk and this hazard, under the law, you are required to take reasonable steps to prevent that from happening. Mm -hmm. So was that done in this case? I don't know. I, I don't have enough information to make that call. Um, but it's clear to me, based on what I know in other cases, that a sufficient anchoring of this product to the ground should protect kids when the wind is 20 miles per hour and lower. Mm. So there's a, there's a number of questions that have to be asked uh, each step along the way on what the event organizers knew what, or what they should have known how the product was set up, what the safety protocol is, where did that safety protocol come from, whether it was properly met, and whether it was properly met under the weather conditions at the time of this event. Mm -hmm. The other question that has to be answered is, what sort of involvement did the school have? They're the landowners here. Did they decide where this bouncy house was required to be set up? And if so, was that the safest spot on the property, given the potential weather and wind conditions that day? Mm -hmm. um, so that raises the potential there might be a claim against the school. 
if it did something or didn't do something that might have contributed to this hazard occurring. The other thing that I noticed, noticed in the news stories is that some of the kids were tethered to the, to the bouncy house, um, which dramatically increases the chance of injury should the thing be blown away. Um, and so was the tethering of the kids proper at all and proper under these weather conditions? Mm. Were the kids old enough to be tethered? You know, these are just a handful of questions that I, as a, as a lawyer, would want to know when I'm investigating a case like this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Um, like, who, if, if police invest investigations don't go deep enough, who do you believe should step in to properly investigate this? Well, th there's an investigation from the authorities on the government side. And that's something that, I, that would be handled uh, internally by them. Usually the police investigation, the police investigation oftentimes is the only one. In this situation, because the school district is involved, I would anticipate that they would do their own investigation. Um, but for any children that were seriously injured, uh, you know, potentially permanent or life altering injuries where more medical care would be needed, they should probably contact their own attorney and, ha and allow their attorney to do their own investigation. So if it were my case, I would be hiring experts to look at this case more closely. I would be interviewing people, uh, not just at the scene when it had happened, but I would be trying to interview uh, people with the company that was responsible for setting it up and, for, and people at the manufacturer, with the manufacturer to determine whether it was properly set up or not. I would be collecting the um, setup manuals and owner manuals for the product and hiring expert installers um, and probably former other investigators that have investigated this type of incident occurring in other states to direct me on um, how deep and the investigation would go and whether the steps should be taken to learn how this could have happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Um, well, I, I think that that's all I have for you now, unless you have anything.